We're live, we're live, we're live. How are you all doing? We thought we'd jump on here because we were just talking about the arches. Well, we were just doing our, our private members group session, mm -hmm. which we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, we were getting a good chat with some of the guys on like past experiences and we used the backdrop of the arches and everybody was commenting on it and we were like, well... It got us talking about like nights. Um, so we'll start with Gal. With me? Because you're obviously dead young, you missed all <laughs> the arches. I did, I did. Um, people are like, dead young and that, bro. Um, no, well, the thing is, is I did, I didn't unfortunately go to like all the big dancing nights. You do know me. Prior to being involved with the studio, I wasn't the biggest dance fan. Mm -hmm. I was more hip hop and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I was lucky enough to, I say lucky enough, it was actually so unfortunate what happened. <laughs> um, I was like 16, 17, and uh, some, uh, someone had got me tickets to Mauro Picotto, right? Oh, and being man. Italian and all Mauro that, Picotto. I knew Komodo, and I knew some of the big ones even from yeah. him before I was even into the, the kind of the bigger DJs and stuff. And uh, someone was like, do you want to go? And I was like, well, I want to go and see an Italian in the arts, of course. So me and my Italian cousin went. I actually think my sister and her ex-boyfriend were there as well. What a random uh, foursome. And uh, we got in. And the tunes are pumping. I don't know who... I'd have loved to have known who was playing prior, by the way. Maybe Ricardo Ferry or something. Maybe, man. I just, I, I just I, don't I, I know. It must have been a Colours Night. I don't know. I oh, can't I, remember, man. I'm just trying to remember whether it was... It must be like 06. must be like 06, 07 man, or does something. Does anyone know what, what nights was it? Was it Colours or Inside Out that Mauro Picotto played? Well... It could have been either. Either way, I was there and... Mauro's about to come on, like he's starting, and I'm like, right, cool, here we go, because I think I heard one tune, um, and then my cousin at Davide just was like, so he hates me talking about this, but he doesn't speak English, so it's all right, <laughs> and uh, and uh, he basically, he just like fell into a wall, like steaming drunk, he was 18, I was like 16, I was underage, right, should he be saying that, 17, and uh, he's bumped into the wall, and Obviously, a security guard has seen it, and he's just like, oh, yeah, 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 you came here, and I'm like, no, 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 he's fine, he's fine, he's fine, he's like, no, no, he's had too much to drink, and then Davide was getting aggro and drunk and all that, so anyway, we got thrown out, and the two years had the worst argument right outside the arches, in Italian, and like... <laughs> <laughs> me shouting bits of Scottish and amongst it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the two's are a, a bloody Miss Mauro. So I just told my sister and, and uh, her ex at the time, I'm like, aye, we are heading down the road. David to get flung out. So that was that. But in terms of positive... Positive Arches experiences. Positive Arches was Dusky. Dusky. Dusky, which was actually one of the last getting two gigs before it shut. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's nice to kind of butter it up and go, it was the last gig, what? Mm -hmm. And then uh, also, I went to see MF Doom in like 20, 2010 with all my Italian cousins and friends that all came because we're massive hip hop heads. And MF Doom in the Arches was amazing. Like, what a setting to see one of my favourite rappers. Any live act in that place. There was something about the sound and the acoustics. And a wee curveball, as I've seen you a couple of times in there. And I remember you dragged me along to one gig where it was like the next room was like pure hardcore banging stuff, but you were playing like one of the, the better rooms in my eyes, in my aye. opinion. And I just remember you were kind of having me on going, aye, this is where I'm playing. And I was standing and it was like, just I'm like, oh, I'm not going to last I long. I think I played that, that night was a good grief night. Aye. That I get drafted in. Very young, it was a DJ I get drafted in to do the warm up. Yeah, so I was playing like kind of chunky, like good, the good stuff. I well, I and then <laughs> you, it, you were kidding me on though, because it was like a pure hard style room. You're like, I asked what I'm playing, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be this. You're like, no, I'm like, kind of I'm in there. Look. I, I think it was actually the main arch that I was playing, but it was sideways, remember? Yeah, yeah, it, like I preferred see when you walked into the arches and it was like you had the north arch. Then the playroom, and then the main room was set up as if you were looking right at it. Do you mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So rather than it being long ways, I preferred that. And then it kind of splintered off left and right. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Um, but what other artist experiences have you? Well, I mean, I'm trying to trying to think. Those those are the standout ones anyway. And then a couple of kind of bespoke nights here and there that wasn't maybe like big DJ nights or that. What about yourself? I mean, the first one I went to was I was decked out in a white dust suit from Asda. And that Spray and that's where were you working there? I no, know, no, no, I was definitely not working that night. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I was one of those ones you end up in the casino after it. Oh, right. Uh, with that suit on? <laughs> with that suit on, aye. Jesus. I, I wouldn't have let you me in, but see when you say <laughs> anyone who, who's been through that, uh, you end up, if you've just joined, you're just joining the casino, you get a mugshot taken for your your membership. Oh, no. <laughs> it's usually after the arts. Oh, I see <laughs> that big <picture>, son, man. <laughs> oh, uh, but I the first one was... Um, Eddie Hallowell white white night the white party, okay inside out Christmas time, head to toe in the the dust suit, few of us unforgettable you know you just go in it's I don't know there's something about the sound system the atmosphere the way it shaped the walls mm-hmm. um I know the vibe everyone in there was just so nice as well it's like everyone was congregating for a reason and. I don't know, it was magical, and, and you'd bump into, like, your best mate, who you would only see that night. Aye, but you would always but see the arches. Aye, you would see the arches, but you'd make like, new best mates every time you were there, do you know what I mean? Um, Honestly, unforgettable. Cre- Eddie Hallowell, Cream, uh, it wasn't Cream, it was Inside Out, White Party. There were a few of us, 18 years old. At the same time I was going to Fantasia and that. Um, But amazing, amazing. And then all, all, the, all the other Inside Out nights that preceded that were amazing. I mean, Marcel Woods, Marco V, Richard Duran, who we had fun with. And, well, I mean, we, we, we had actually uh, friends with Richard uh, now. In uh, Amsterdam a few years ago, <laughs> it was funny. Who else? Willie Daniel. William Daniel, by the way. How good was he? See, when they started scratching on the vinyl and all that, and you were in the crowd just going for it. Incredible. He's one of these guys that will go down in folklore. You know, DJing mm. in Scotland and stuff like he really he's always been able to hold his own and you can just tell how respected he is. Probably underrated for you know for what I mean, like done. like for what he done, you know. It's like um even like some of the, the other older guys that are, you know, still still in the scene doing their thing, Mallorca Lee and Davy Forbes and all that, and you know, it's so you know, I, there's a part of me gutted I did miss a lot of all that, you know what I mean? But at the same time it's it is what it is now. I, I love these guys now, and it's great to hear. I can see there's people sharing experiences. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to read some of these, right? Uh, <coughs> Matthew Smiles saying, there's too many. Eddie Hallowell, Bosch Tour. <sighs> Absolutely, mate. Local Dice in the Main Arch. Wow, that would have been amazing. Matt Hardwick playing at the Bells at New Year. His first night uh, was Judge Jules um, and Mistress Barber. Playing the playroom, see, amazing, uh, mate. See, see, before you move on to the next one, do you not think it's mad, though, like, back then, these heroes, and, like, you were going to see Eddie Halliwell and that, and then this year you supported Eddie Halliwell and the mm. club under techno? I we were that both cool. playing techno under our own kind of names. Very cool. But, like, I was playing with Eddie Halliwell doing, like, a Scottish tour. When with, you were, like, 17? Play, I what was about, maybe 21. All right, okay. So I'd done all the artsies clubbing and that, and then... I get the chance to actually play with Eddie, and that was like, you know, I was like that. You know, it was a proper, you know. DJing so- totally evolved since then as well, isn't it? It's like a different thing now as well, like, and just in terms of, like, mm. Shugs kind of keeps it alive with some of the, the old school kind of styles he does. Yeah. That was all the rage then, wasn't it? Aye, like, it was totally, like, see, Rectify as well in the sound house. There was a, a particular style that we all loved. It was obviously faster. It was like techno way. It was like Fred Baker type stuff. Uh, there was trancey parts to it, but it was it was rapid and, and it was pumping. Fred but Baker, there was man. like types of different skills you'd do on the decks and all that. Right. Like I'll, I'll re- uh, go through some of these. Cheers for the comment, Matthew. Hope you're well, brother. Aye, Mara Picotto would have played both, I'm sure. I was just wondering what one it was. I'd maybe seen him. Um, Barry uh, Lang. Langan? Saying happening, gal. Louis Doherty How saying been, hot since 82 was his first... Ever time and first ever rave. Nice one for a first one. Uh, Kathleen Gallagher. Um, I'm in the casino at 5am trying to sign up for a membership to get a taxi absolutely pinging. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, man. Oh, those are the, those are the, the arches, eh? 
Um, it was a family vibe, Miles, for sure. Underworld Live 1995. Eddie McGurley, that's that takes it. Now, that it. would be something else. What about live, like, DJ bands then, not just actual DJs, live bands? Have you seen any? Imagine Chemical Brothers in the Arches. Well, I have seen Chemical Brothers, I've seen as them, have you. I've, but I've not seen them in the Arches, imagine them in there. I've seen them in the SECC, I think. And th- I mean that that to be fair was definitely one of the better gigs. I, I wish them, um, I'd seen Daft Punk at Rock Nest, man. Mm. That just looks like the most insane set you've ever seen in your whole life. Um, Chemical Brothers at the Hydro recently were. Pff, I was videoing you from it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Slam's live sets look good. Slam. We've not mentioned Pressure. Wow. So, Pressure. I started getting into. Um, after I'd kind of I was doing the inside out and all that, and then we start evolving into more techno stuff, mm-hmm. um, for sure. And and Slam, they've just been consistently smashing it non-stop, just amazing Slamming from their old it. stuff. See the more, more melodic kind of positive education through in this world. To this world, you know what I mean? Amazing. Davide, abbiamo raccontato una storia di te, eh? I'm just letting Davide know that uh, Mauro Picotto, we cringe. arch December Did he 2000. Wow. I was talking to my cousin Davide, who I outed earlier. Fergie was Danny there. Smith. Danny, uh, I was going to just mention you there. You are insane in the arches, to be honest. You've done the perfect warm-up for just getting the juices flowing, mate. I'm glad you commented, because I was going to say you there. Um, brilliant, mate. You are, Class. You are insane, honestly. Loved it. Um, one, Danny. Amazing, mate. Got to I've never seen I you, know. mate. I know. I know. I'll leave but you now. Look, see, this is what Inside Out was good for. It was, which is what I'm all about now still. It's house, techno, and there was trance there as well. Dance music. But high quality artists, no matter what, it was all dance music, you know what I mean? It's weird. Like, I think everybody musically, in their own way, is a little bit snobby, right? But like, I think the studio as a whole, we've really tried to, as much as we might be individually with certain things, we've tried to be quite open. Open. And it come, stems from that, doesn't it? Yeah, Stems totally. from that. Legends, man. Ross Riley was happening, brother. Sister Bliss, can he mind the year? Oofed. That would have been something else. Maxi Jazz and that. Oh, wow. wow. Imagine that. Mikey Collins, what's happening, brother, man? This is what I'm talking about, Matthew. Fred Baker, Adam Sheridan, Scott Project, Simon Patterson, Anne Savage, Barry Connell. Wow, Barry Connell. Whew. I was going to mention Barry Connell. That was one that the, he gets all the massive praises, doesn't he, man? Who was there at his 2007 Essential Mix? I think that was the year. I was there. I was there. Were you there? I was there. I was no at right at the front watching it. He had a reddish type T-shirt on. And it was just phenomenal. You're watching everything he's doing in that mixer. I was just like the up and coming DJ. What is he doing on that mixer? Amazing though. What, what a shame, talent. man. What a shame. What a story that I was. Know. Fred Baker though as well. I mean, like, I, I I don't think a lot of people know like how legendary he is in the scene. Oh, he what was, he's he done was, in the he background. Was, he was a big producer behind a lot of the early Tiesto tracks. <gasps> what? What do you um, mean? He was part of the play and all that. No. Still going, Fred. Lovely guy, isn't he? Aye, great guy. The um, Orbital no play in there, Paul's saying. Let's see. I think so. Dave Paradise is saying, get my foot on a CD. Picotto threw out of the crowd at Inside Out, and, and he got the CD home, and it was a six set with a load of unknown tracks. Wow. Oh, jeez. How good oh. were CDs and that? Getting past the CD, and you're still flying from the experience, and you get back to a party or something like that. Right, let's put this in. on. Paco Asuna. First pressure. Oh. Wow. Under pressure. Richie Horton at the Archies. Incredible. Wow. That'd have been huge. Let's see. Too many. Let's see. Too many to see. Judge Jules Radio One Nights. To the guy climbing up in the speaker and falling on the decks during Jules' set. Whoa. And the guy get dragged out by half the club. <laughs> Jesus. Um, or the night me and the boys got into the VIP with Eddie Marcel Woods. The VIP bit was behind the glass, which was uh, which was so cool looking behind it and that. Um, 
Let's see, that's a big story, that one. But aye, that's uh, Craig DK. Good memories. We'll keep it a bit PC, Craig. Demires. Brilliant. Um, I was Lewis Doherty saying, last time it was in the Archies before it was uh, defected with MK, Frankie Rizzardo. Nice. Um, oh, on. man, Danny Smith. My best... Hey, I'll put this one up. My best experience was hand, handing Judge Jules... Uh, that camera. I know what you're trying to say. I just kind of say it in case we get uh, on vinyl and asking them to play it in the place went wild. What a tune that is! You'll know the tune. I'll need to play it on for you. It's an absolute beast. And that's a bold move, Danny. I know. And it, judge you play us, man. Play us. I'll get one for you. Boom! Place going wild. What I'm feeling. I must have been me. You like? I knew it. I knew it. I should. Oh, let me on. Let me on. Carol Cox every Easter weekend. I was there. Oh yes, oh how, yes. How good did Carol Cox, man? He was just he was just rocking it. He's such a groover. I mean, still to, still to this day, there was a video of him sure a couple of years ago, and he was trying out one of the new mixers, and he was just sitting down playing it, and he's still like that, sitting. Like... Uh, Barry Gallagher seen Derek May. I would love to have seen Derek May. Definitely. Loads of cool comments and memories he's are sharing. Thanks for that. Uh, we were just getting a chat there about different Archie's experiences, different DJs, how a memorable, how what a memorable club it was. Oh. Um, aye. Ewan Robertson saying Felix the house cat swinging a load of tequila uh, before playing in the main arch. Felix the house cat, nice, nice. That's that's cool. That's old school, man. We have a name on a silver screen. That reminds me of my Italian mate, Sam. That was my mate that climbed up in the speakers and fell into the DJ booth. He's the only one that made the judge budge. <laughs> no way, no <laughs> way. I if that's true or not. I know. <laughs> Hopefully, imagine the, our long-lost friends from the Arches have found each other on our stream. Imagine that. Like, I've not seen you in ages. Eddie Halliwell was my first. Uh, Marco V, Deadmau5, Sven Vath, Joseph Capriati, Gary Beck, Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben, I was there at Chris Lieben. Incredible. Oh, I mean, Mark Friel, I mean, there's another one. Mark Friel's the Don. Legend. Don of the Archies. He get you right he get me into, He get me in. He get me, gave me my first gig, Mark. So thanks for that. <laughs> Mark, man. Oh, oh, you, brother. Definitely. But aye, it's been good fun hearing all the stories. Jeff Mills, Dave Clark, Green Velvet. Wow. Wow, man. I mean, really. So, do you not think, though, like a lot of these events like your insides outs and all these things obviously it it stopped a while ago anyway but with the closing of the arches like there's not that venue now that can really offer this multi-genre tier uh, apart swg3 maybe, is the venue well apart from it's, there and maybe the classic grand do you know what i mean uh, swg3 there's no doubt that is an incredible venue doing its own thing forging its own way but um you know i, I think it's absolutely amazing that venue to be honest it's, it's even more than the arches but there's just something about the iconic place that is that do you know what I mean? Well, it's, it's the shape. It's where it was. It's like the, the actual interior design was phenomenal. SWG3 is probably better for a venue for mm -hmm. different stuff. Aye. But you'll probably never beat the actual magic of the artist, yeah, man. totally. Well, it's still cool to go into now. I mean, you can go in uh, now. You can still go and you can still go into the toilets and all that. And they're kind of similar. It's... Kind of freaks you well, out. weirdly, one of our guys from Escapade went and played at the Arches recently at the SQA Awards, and Nicola Sturgeon was there and all mm. that. I don't know if any of you seen it, but like, like you know, so it's still getting used. There's still a little bit of dance music bleeding into those bricks, man. Aye, definitely. There's there's history in those bricks. But look, that's us. We're just dropping in. We're just dropping in, saying hello, and uh, we'll get some cool chat there. Aye, have a nice evening, trips. Bye bye, trips. See you soon.